Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner, available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. In this episode of C++ Weekly, I want to discuss, well, a problem that most of us have had at some point. I've just declared my struct of some type. And I want to create an object of some type. And I do it like this, because I want to default construct the value of some type. And then I go to access this thing. And I get this error. Error, request for member data and value, which is of non-class type, some type. And you're like, what are you talking about, compiler? This is some type, some type, some type. It has a value. I want the data from it. Now, this is known as the most vexing parse. And this issue has been around since the beginning of C++. Now, the key to understanding this, first of all, let's see, we've got WLW extra uh, turned on in GCC. Let's switch to Clang real quick, because it is my understanding that modern compilers will give you a warning here. Ah, here we go, dash W vexing parse. There we go, so Clang gives us a warning, letting us know that we are in fact invoking the most vexing parse here. So what have we done, in fact? That is that we have forward declared a function called value that takes zero parameters and returns an object of some type. So let's go back to this GCC real quick. Uh, GCC now also tells us vexing parse, but let's go back to this particular warning because I'm looking at GCC trunk here instead of GCC 10.2, which I was looking at previously. A non-class type, some type here. Now this is a tricky declaration to read. This is function reference syntax. You might be familiar with function pointer syntax. This is a function pointer that returns an object of some type and takes zero parameters. You may not be familiar with the fact that reference syntax exists as well. This is a function that returns an object of some type and takes zero parameters. Even though you may not be familiar that this syntax exists, you have probably used it many times. I have here used the member reference syntax to say, I want a standard function that returns some type and takes zero parameters. Most of you have used this at some point, you just didn't know necessarily which syntax you were using. So here, I can actually call this function like this. And it doesn't know what value it's going to return because it's calling this function called value here and there's no definition for this available, so it can't be inlined. Now, I'm still getting this um, most vexing parse and it says use empty parentheses where disambiguated as a function. Yes, okay. Remove parentheses to default initialize the variable. But there are cases actually where we might have a real need to do this. For example, some sort of privately declared function somewhere or that we just don't want in our global namespace or publicly visible at the moment. Or perhaps um, there's no reason to forward declare that function here, but I do want to define it later. I'm going to use this interesting syntax, which says just default initialize the thing that you know that I should be returning here, which is pretty darn handy. So this value function now gets to be declared as something that is just moving 42 into EIX and returning from there, and main is just returning 42 via EIX as well. 
So that's the most vexing parse. It is a way to forward declare a function that is entirely unexpected. Of course, if we do this, then uh, it starts to make a little bit more sense. And if we use braced initialization for default initialization, then it's impossible to have the most vexing parse come up. This is something you can look at endless examples for on the internet, uh, but it is kind of handy that the trunk versions of GCC and Clang are giving us warnings on this now. So thank you for watching this episode of C++ Weekly. Hope you learned something new.